Welcome! This video will guide you through the disassembly, repair, and reassembly of the Viking Pump Packed Universal Seal Heavy Duty Internal Gear Pump. This series includes the following Viking Pump models. As always, consult the applicable technical service manual for important safety information before you begin. A copy of the latest revision can be found on our website at vikingpump.com. Always remember that safety is the highest priority. When working on or around any equipment, follow the correct safety procedures. It is critical to know what liquid the pump has been handling and the precautions necessary to safely handle the liquid. Always read and follow the safety warnings in the service manual before any work is started on the pump. Copies of the latest service manuals can be found on our website at vikingpump.com. You may require the following tools for disassembly and repair. SAE wrenches, a packing hook, Allen wrenches, and a soft-headed hammer. A complete listing of tools and part numbers can be found in the service manual. For newer pumps, seal kit and repair kit part numbers can be found on a hang tag on the pump. For older pumps, or if the tag has been removed, contact your local authorized Viking Pump Distributor with the model and serial number of the pump to obtain these part kit numbers. The pumps covered in this video are packed pumps where the packing is located in the stuffing box area of the pump bracket, held in place with a packing retainer washer on one end and a packing gland on the outside. The seal kit includes replacement packing, gaskets, bearing, collars, lip seals, packing retainer washer, and associated hardware. The repair kit includes a replacement idler and bushing assembly, head and pin assembly, casing bushing, and associated hardware. Take care when opening the kit so as not to cut or damage these repair parts. Keep the pump and work area as clean as possible. Drain the pump of any residual liquid. Turning the shaft will help expel any liquid trapped in the gear teeth. Mark the head and casing before disassembly to ensure proper reassembly. Remove the head cap screws or nuts. On larger pumps, jack screws should be used to back the head away from the casing. Remove the head by tilting it backward to prevent the idler from falling off the idler pin. Insert a brass bar or piece of hardwood in the port opening and between the rotor teeth to keep the shaft from turning. Bend up a tang of lock washer and with a spanner wrench remove the lock nut and lock washer from the shaft. Remove the lock nut and lock washer from the shaft. Loosen two set screws in the face of the bearing housing and remove the bearing housing assembly from the bracket. Remove the pair of half round rings under the inner spacer collar from the shaft. Note that H and HL size pumps do not have these rings. Remove the packing gland to expose the packing. Use a packing hook to take out the packing. The rotor and shaft assembly can now be removed from the pump. A soft-headed hammer may be needed to tap on the end of the shaft for removal. Take care in removing the rotor and shaft to avoid damaging the bracket bushing. Remove the packing retainer washer. Loosen two radial set screws in the flange of the bearing housing and with a spanner wrench, unscrew the outer end cap. Remove the outer end cap with lip seal and outer bearing spacer collar. Remove the bearing, lip seal, and inner bearing spacer collar from the bearing housing. Inspect the pump parts for wear, particularly critical parts such as the rotor, casing, idler pin, idler bushing, and bracket bushing. Check parts for nicks, burrs, and excessive wear. Replace any worn components. It's recommended not to reuse packing unless you've been instructed to do so by Viking Pump or your Ithera's Viking Pump distributor. Install bushing into the bracket. Bushings with lubrication grooves should be installed with the groove at the top or 12 o'clock position. Carbon graphite bushings require extreme care to avoid breaking the bushing during installation. For carbon graphite bushings, use a lubricant and make certain that the bushing is started straight. Use a press to completely install the bushing in one continuous motion. Starting and stopping will crack the bushing. Mm -hmm. 
Lubricate the shaft and inner diameter of the shaft bushing. Slide the rotor shaft assembly into the casing. Remove socket head cap screws connecting the relief valve to the head. Remove old gaskets from under the relief valve. Install the relief valve gaskets onto the head. Use a gasket sealant if available. Attach the relief valve onto the head. Install and tighten socket head cap screws. Place a 10 to 15 thousandths of an inch head gasket on the pump head and use a gasket sealant if available. Coat the idler pin with light oil and place the idler and bushing on the idler pin in the head. Reinstall the head and idler gear and use a gasket sealant if available. Ensure the proper location of the pin and crescent. The idler pin, which is offset in the pump head, must be positioned toward and equally distant between the port connections to allow proper flow of liquid through the pump. Tighten the head cap screws evenly. Place the packing retainer washer over the shaft and install the new packing. Lubricate the packing rings to aid with assembly. A length of pipe will help to seat each packing ring. Stagger the packing ring joints from one side of the shaft to the other to make sure there is no direct leak path through the packing. Install the packing gland, cap screws, and nuts. Make sure the gland is installed square and the nuts are tightened evenly until the packing gland is snug against the packing. Don't over tighten the cap screws. Install the lip seal in the bearing housing with the lip toward the end of the shaft. Install the lip seal with the lip toward the end of the shaft into the end cap. Pack the bearing with grease and push it into the bearing housing. Insert nylon slugs. Install the outer bearing spacer collar in the outer end cap and turn the end cap into the bearing housing until tight against the bearing. Tighten the two radial set screws to lock the end cap in location. For tapered roller bearings, see the appropriate technical service manual for lip seal orientation and proper method of applying the preload. Slide the inner spacer collar over the shaft with recessed end facing the rotor. 
Place the pair of half round rings on the shaft and slide the inner bearing spacer collar over the half round rings to lock them in place. Install the bearing housing. H and HL sized pump bearing spacer collars are not recessed and do not have the half round rings. Insert a length of hardwood or brass through the port opening between the rotor teeth to keep the shaft from turning. Put the lock washer and lock nut on the shaft. Tighten the lock nut to 50 to 70 foot pounds of torque for size H and HL pumps, or 100 to 130 foot pounds of torque for larger pump sizes. Bend one tang of lock washer into the slot of the lock nut. If the tang doesn't line up with the slot, tighten the lock nut until it does. Failure to tighten the lock nut or engage the lock washer tang could result in early bearing failure and cause damage to the pump. Back off the bearing housing counterclockwise until the rotor shaft can be turned with a slight noticeable drag. This point is known as zero end clearance. Mark the position of the bearing housing with respect to the bracket. Using the measurement from the table in the technical service manual, make a second mark on the bracket left of the first mark at the distance indicated. In this example, we require 5 thousandths of an inch end clearance on a model KK124A pump, so the mark is made one and a half inches away. Rotate the thrust bearing assembly counterclockwise until the bearing housing mark aligns with this new bracket mark. Tighten the two self-locking set screws in the outboard face of the bearing housing with equal force against the bracket. The pump end clearance is now set and locked. Be sure the shaft can rotate freely. If not, back off additional length on the outside diameter and check again. Lubricate all grease fittings with multi-purpose grease NLGI number two. On startup of the pump, carefully tighten the gland to reduce leakage until the desired leakage rate is obtained. A little leakage during the break-in period is necessary to help lubricate and cool the packing. The maximum recommended adjustment at one time is one eighth of a turn. If during this period heating occurs, back off on the gland and allow the pump to run until the stuffing box cools. Then begin readjustment. The pump should leak at least a few drops a minute to make sure that the packing is adequately lubricated. Your Viking Pump Packed General Purpose Internal Gear Pump is fully repaired and ready to be put back into service. If you still have any questions regarding this or other Viking Pump products, please contact your local authorized Viking Pump distributor or visit us on the web at vikingpump.com. Thank you.